The Frank Hertz experiment is named after the physicists James Frank and Gustav Hertz. It is one of the most impressive examples of quantum physics and is also relatively simple in design. In the original experiment, a tube filled with mercury vapor was used. However, we use a so-called cyrotron tube filled with argon. It doesn't need an oven and is much cheaper. The experiment requires a special power supply unit that supplies an adjustable acceleration voltage, retarding voltage and fixed heating voltage with an adjustable current for the filament of the tube. The construction of the custom power supply began with a laser cut housing made of MDF. Here you can see a custom PCB I designed to adjust the 50 volts supplied by the switching power supply between 1 and 50 volts. I also designed a PCB for the Cyrotron tube. Once everything was wired up with homemade banana plug cables, I was finally able to start the experiment. Here you can see one for the Frank Hertz experiment typical current drop with increasing acceleration voltage. After the anode current has reached a minimum, the current increases again. This can be observed several times as the accelerating voltage increases further and further. To make this easier to see, I plotted the anode current over a wide voltage range. The resulting regular minima in the anode current are not as distinctive as when using a mercury or neon Frank Hertz tube, 
but a very low price makes up for this shortcoming. Nevertheless, pretty cool. As in the Frank Hertz experiment with neon gas, glowing regions can also be seen with argon. Also the design of the tube prevents a direct view. To understand what is happening here, let's look at the original Frank Hertz experiment. The electrons move in the tube and collide with the mercury atoms. It turned out that there are only two types of collisions, the elastic and inelastic collision. If the electron doesn't have enough kinetic energy, it simply bounces off the mercury atom. This is called an elastic collision. If the electron has a high kinetic energy, it excites the mercury atom when they collide. The mercury atom emits a photon. This is called an inelastic collision. So if the electron has a kinetic energy of delta E, which is 4.9 electron volts for the mercury atom, it boosts the mercury atom to the energy level n equals 2. However, this state is not stable. The mercury atom jumps back to the ground state n equals 1 and emits a photon, the wavelength of which is in the non-visible range for mercury. After the collision, the electron only continues to move with very low kinetic energy. The Frank Hertz experiment thus confirms the theory that the energy levels are quantized. The Frank Hertz tube is now constructed in such a way that low energy electrons can be distinguished from high energy electrons. The acceleration voltage can be adjusted to accelerate the electrons emitted from the filament accordingly. A so called stopping potential is applied between the accelerating grid and the collector. Only high energy electrons can overcome this repulsive electric field and reach the collector. The collector's current is a direct measure of how many high energy electrons reach the collector. Simple, but also very clever. Eleven years after the publication of their results, James Frank and Gustav Hertz were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for 1925.